uh, we're still in chapter one. Uh, we're, tr we're trying to uh, introduce some basic uh, characteristics or some basic functions that we will continue to encounter uh, throughout the course, okay? So uh, last week, we started to talk about complex exponential signals. So um, starting from continuous time, right, a complex exponential signal, x of t, in general can be written as this constant c times exponential to the power a times the time index t, OK? Now, in general, c and a can both be complex numbers. But if you pick c and a both to be real, then what you have is a real exponential that either increases or decreases depending on whether the exponent a is positive or negative, OK? Now, the second case is when, uh, assuming c is just some uh, arbitrary real number, let's say 1, and the exponent is a pure imaginary, uh, which means that we pick a equal to j times some number omega naught. OK? So in this case, we showed that this uh, becomes a periodic signal, right? This becomes a periodic signal with fundamental period t naught that is equal to 2 pi over omega naught. Here we put an absolute sign here because this fundamental period should be positive. Now, this uh, periodic complex exponential is uh, inherently related to sinusoidal signals. And this is mainly due to Euler's relation. All right, so by Euler's relation, we know that this e to the j omega naught t can be written as a cosine in the real domain and a sine in the imaginary domain, OK? So uh, through some manipulation, right, this allows us to obtain different you know, expressions for this uh, sinusoid. Right? So we know that we can express you know, a cosine as the summation of two uh, complex exponentials, but with a negative sign here, uh, with a negative sign difference in the face, OK? Or we can write this as the real part of this complex exponential. All right. So right, whenever uh, you encounter a periodic complex exponential like this, it's always good to imagine that what you're, what you're dealing with is really just a sinusoid. Uh, one in the real domain and the other in the imaginary domain, OK? So we know that sinusoids are periodic. Uh, in fact, if the frequency is omega naught, then the fundamental period is 2 pi over omega naught, which uh, we define as t naught. And the omega naught here is called the fundamental frequency, OK? Now, for periodic signals, uh, we showed from uh, previously through another example, that periodic signals uh, should in general have infinite energy but finite power, OK? Infinite energy because it extends, right, it extends over the infinite horizon, and finite power because it has you know, the same shape repeated uh, over time, not, not increasing uh, over time, OK? So specifically, right, suppose you're looking at x of t that is equal to e to the j omega naught t. Then the energy, the energy per one period which we denote as this E period, is the integral of the absolute square of the signal okay, over one period, uh, which is from 0 to t naught. OK? Right. So to show this, right, we start out by computing the energy per one period which is the integral over the signal absolute squared 
over one period. Okay. Now this periodic complex exponential has a magnitude of one. So what we're integrating over is just a constant one. Okay. So this is the integral of one dt, which is just t naught. Okay. So the energy over one period is t naught, but you have the same signal repeated infinitely often over time. So the total energy over the entire signal should be infinite. Now you can also compute the average power starting over one period. Let's call it P period. Okay. Now the power is just the energy divided by the duration you're looking at. All right. So the average power over one period is just the energy averaged over one period. OK? And since E period is T naught, if you substitute that inside, this will become 1. Okay. Now, since the signal looks the same in every period, therefore, if the average power over one period is 1, this means that the average power over the entire periodic signal should still be 1. Okay. So this is uh, the average power over one period is the same as the average power over the entire uh, periodic signal. OK. So last week, uh, we sort of ended with this um, you know, going into the weekend. All right, we tried to observe this signal a little bit more carefully. All right. So here, uh, we're looking at this periodic complex exponential, x of t equal to e to the j omega t. Right Now, we know that this signal is periodic with period t naught, okay, if, right, by the definition of a periodic signal, right, it's peri periodic with period t naught if x of t is equal to x of t plus t naught for every t. Okay? Now, if you substitute x of t inside, this is saying that e to the j omega t should be equal to e to the j omega t times e to the j omega capital T naught. So for this to be equal, this means that e to the j omega t naught must be equal to 1. And this is possible only if omega t naught is equal to an integer multiple of 2 pi. OK? Right? OK, so if you think of this e to the j omega t as this vector, you know, going around a unit circle on a complex plane. So if you imagine, if you imagine uh, this, this e to the j omega t as some vector on this complex plane, right? Then because the magnitude of this function is 1, right, as t increases, we will be rotating along, you know, this unit circle, a circle of radius 1, okay, continuously around the origin, right? Now, in order for the signal to be periodic with period t naught, this means that this vector must come back to the same point after t naught. Okay? And this is possible only if, right, after t naught, your phase increases by a full cycle, which is 2 pi, right, or 4 pi, or 6 pi, or 8 pi, right? Okay. 
All right, so this complex exponential, periodic complex exponential is periodic with period t naught if omega t naught is equal to an integer multiple of 2 pi, or if this frequency omega, right, if you move this t naught to the other side, or if this omega is an integer multiple of 2 pi over t naught, which we define as omega naught. Okay, so again, this is periodic with period t naught if the frequency is an integer multiple of two pi over t naught. Okay. So last last week uh, we tried to plot out these different cases. All right. So. So suppose that this is time 0 to t naught, OK? Now, a sinusoid, uh, uh, because I, I'm only able to plot out you know, either the real or the, comp, uh, real or the imaginary domain, so suppose that I'm plotting out just the real domain, OK? Um, so I plot out just uh, one sinusoid looking something like OK? So if you look at this sinusoid, this sinusoid has a period of t naught, and the frequency is omega equal to 2 pi over t naught. OK? Now, I can also right, increase the frequency of the sinusoid by two times, in which case I will experience two periods in between 0 and t naught. OK? So in this case, it's still periodic with period t naught, but the frequency now, OK, let's say this is omega naught. So in this case, the frequency is 2 times 2 pi over t naught, which is 2 omega naught. OK? Now we can do one more, right? We can you know, squeeze in one more period. So to let my signal look something like this, OK? So in this case, we have, you know, we have a signal that is also periodic with period t naught. But now the frequency is three times that of the original frequency, okay, or three times omega naught, okay, and so on and so forth, okay. So this sort of illustrates, you know, what we're talking about here, right? So for a sinusoid or a periodic complex exponential to be periodic with period t naught, the frequency must be integer multiples of 2 pi over t naught. OK. Now, you can continue to squeeze in more and more and more uh, cycles within this uh, time duration t naught. Now, all of these signals, all of these periodic complex exponentials, that have the same period t naught, we define as a set of what we call a harmonically related complex exponentials. OK? Right. So we define a harmonically related set of complex exponentials uh, as a set of periodic exponentials with fundamental frequencies that are integer multiples of omega naught. OK? So we define a harmonically related set of complex exponentials as these signals that have frequency that are integer multiples of omega naught. And having frequencies being integer multiples of omega naught is saying that all these signals have a common period 
of T naught. Okay? And we denote these signals as phi sub k of t, okay? So I have, right, among this harmonically related set, I have a signal phi zero of t, that is e to the j zero, right, which makes this a constant. I can have phi sub one of t, which is e to the j omega naught t, which is a signal like this. I can have phi 2 of t, which is e to the j 2 omega naught t, which is signal like this, and so on and so forth. OK? Right. So by choosing arbitrary, you know, by, by choosing different integers k, we construct a harmonically related set of complex exponentials. And the size of this set is infinite, right? Because you can choose you know, infinite number of integers, okay? Now, one common example, right, one place where you would see this, you know, harmonically related set of complex exponentials appearing is in the patterns of vibrations of some string instrument, right? So suppose that these are these fixed endpoints of a violin or cello or whatever, right? then when you draw your bow on this string, you will see vibrations that have, you know, these nulls at, on the side, right? So if you look at this, this signal here, right, if you extend, if you extend uh, beyond this region, you can see that this is sort of a sinusoid with period two, right? So this is a sinusoid with period two. All right. So in this case, the frequency is two pi over two. Okay. Now, if you look at this signal, this is a sinusoid with period one. Right? So this has period one, and uh, the frequency uh, okay, may, maybe it's uh, easier if I talk about this first before I go, go here. All right? So uh, here we have these uh, you know harmonically related uh, complex exponentials. Now for each signal, For each one of these signals, the k omega naught here is the fundamental frequency uh, which is k times omega naught. Okay. And the corresponding fundamental period. It's just two pi over okay. It's just two pi over k omega naught, okay. Or all right, if you define Right, t t naught as two. Uh, if you define t naught as two pi over omega naught, then this is just t naught over k. Okay. Right. So certainly, as you increase the frequency by k times, the period shrinks by k times. Right. The fundamental period shrinks by k times, right? So, for example, if you go from this signal, right, to this signal, your frequency increases by two, but your fundamental period shrinks by two times. Okay. 
All right. So I think with this uh, formula, it's then easier to explain this. All right. So you start out with this basic signal with period two. Right. So when you increase the frequency by two times, right, you get this, which has a period of two divided by two, okay, which is period one. For this signal, you're increasing the frequency by three times. So the period is two divided by three. Okay? And you can see that this is indeed the case, right? Uh, this, point, this point up to this point is 1 over 3, so 1 period is 2 over 3, okay? So it's the same uh, for the others as well. Now, when you draw your bow on this string instrument, right, we, uh, we're saying that you will observe these harmonically related uh, sinusoidal signals, but they do not appear separately, right? They appear as mixtures uh, of each other. Right, uh, they, they appear as a mixture, right? So for example, right, suppose that these are the indiv individual components of these harmonically related sinusoids, then what you observe would actually be, you know, mixtures, right? So for example, if you mix this with this, you may get a signal something like this, or if you mix all three of these, you may get something like this, and so on and so forth, okay? So this sort of shows that by taking different mixtures of these, you know, complex exponentials, you will be able to construct, you know, different types of uh, signals. Okay. Now the way you mix them, right, will affect uh, what signal that you get. Okay, and we'll talk more about that, you know, throughout the the class.